From the odd balance between equity and opportunity in athletics to the cruel gender-based violence that has restricted women to pursue their passion, here are the real challenges female athletes face in Jamaica. It's no secret that gender equity has been an issue in our society throughout history. Since the beginning of time, there has been an imbalance between men and women. Where the female gender has always been subjected to a lot of discrimination, whether it's in their relationships, their careers, or even education, men always seem to have the upper hand. Athletics is no different either. While the island nation is famous for producing world-class athletes, it's also important to know that Jamaican athletes have faced their fair share of troubles along the way. Female athletes in particular suffer a bit more though. While male athletes enjoy significant support in the form of sponsorships and recognition, females are often sidelined, not to mention very underrepresented. One of Jamaica's fastest women sprinters is Shelly Ann Fraser Price. And when she first entered the world of track and field, she was told that she was too young to compete. People were so iffy about her taking part in her first Olympics that they came up with every kind of excuse under the sun to shun her. Years later, after she built a reputation for herself in the sport, when Shelly wanted to compete in the Olympics again, she was then told that she was too old to do that and should gracefully retire. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think anyone would dare say that to male athletes, don't you think? But then again, this isn't the only hurdle along the way for women in sports. There is a severe lack of investment and financial support for female athletes, which is the root cause of how they're still not at par with their male counterparts in the sport. Most of the sport's programs and facilities are worked upon only so that male athletes can train in the best of environments. While the women are left to dust, there's not enough funding to accommodate female athletes, and as a result, with limited resources, they can't exactly train to their full potential. This disparity negatively affects the development and growth of women's sports in the country. And it's probably why, aside from a handful of names, you don't hear a lot of noise rooting for Jamaican female athletes. Cost is one of the biggest hurdles that prevents young girls from even considering sports. Every year, school sports budgets are slashed and considering how only a few people can afford to pay for private school and their facilities, many Jamaican families can't support young girls to pursue their athletic dreams. On a professional level, if sprinters do not have access to the best gyms, tracks, gear, and even coaches, then that's obviously going to affect their performances because they don't have access to the same opportunities as Jamaican male athletes do. I mean, just think about it. Do you really think anyone would let Johan Blake train in a dingy gym or make him sprint across the field in shoes that are unable to withstand the force of his strides? Exactly. And if financial constraints aren't holding these sprinters back, the cultural attitude towards female athletes is also a huge obstacle too. The country's prevailing stereotypes and general cultural values towards women are very different from most countries in the world. Their traditional gender roles and societal expectations claim that women should prioritize their domestic responsibilities over sports and that regardless of whatever career they decide to pursue at the end of the day, they're homemakers who need to conform to societal norms. Yikes. Of course, this is pretty unfair considering so many talented young girls have to give up on their dreams. But seeing women like Merlene Ote, Shelly Ann, Fraser Price, and even Veronica Campbell Brown is proof that no one displays resilience or determination better than women in Jamaican sports. Because despite the fact that women aren't expected to enter into sports, track and field is a huge part of Jamaican culture and Shelly Ann knows it too. While talking about how she belongs to a country that's just a tiny dot on the map, Fraser also acknowledged that even though Jamaican athletes do not have the best resources, they still train in a way that works best for them. She also mentioned how a female athlete's age is a much bigger deal than a man's, and that when a woman turns a certain age, people around her start to dictate what she can and can't do. Luckily for Shelly though, it's all just background noise that goes in one ear and out the other. 
But for many female athletes, this is a huge problem that they face on the daily. Because while they might be able to power through gender discrimination, the intersection of race and nationality in sports also stands in the way of most Jamaican female athletes. At this point, research has shown that most black women continue to find themselves near the bottom of every social indicator, and unfortunately, sports is no different either. In a study that did a thorough analysis of how race, gender, and nationality affect women in sports, it was found that most descriptors used for black women were stereotypical and often included the lines of doing what nobody on the earth would be able to do. Other descriptors used praised black women for being athletically different, as if they were from another planet, which is rooted in generations worth of racial disparity. And just goes on to show that the general consensus of black women excelling in sports is unheard of. In another study from 2017, researchers Musto, Kuki, and Messner presented the other side of the story. They introduced the concept of gender bland sexism and talked about how sometimes the athletic feats of women are discussed in lackluster ways. So when it came to appreciating black women, the backhanded praise saying that no one in the world has ever been able to achieve such a feat was just downright disappointing. Even Miwaniki made the same assumption when he noted that when it came to distance running, black athletes tended to become an ever-present but nameless and faceless opponent that only existed for the next great white hope, as if they couldn't have their own independent triumphs based on their skill set. It's also important to know that all these only exist because there has been a lack of women in decision-making roles in sports too. Take a look at it this way. Why is it that such subtle yet super judgmental descriptors are being used for women? Is it race? Yeah, sure it is, but it's also because women don't have an ally in the hierarchy of sports that can change the narrative and put an end to this. While there has been an increase in female athletes over the years, the fact remains that still as of 2023, they're still facing a glass ceiling experience because they do not have an ally that can stand up for them and advocate for their basic rights. In Jamaica, such a concept is also unheard of, but things are changing too. Organizations like Jamaica Women's Football Federation and the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association are actively working to promote and develop women's sports at all levels. But it's only a small step for now, which is better than nothing, because with initiatives like these, women will now have a platform where they're open to more opportunities, so that they're able to showcase their talents and overcome any barriers they face. Another thing that is unfortunately rampant in Jamaican society, and the reason why there's hesitancy all around the country for women to pursue sports, is the gender-based violence that they're exposed to. Unfortunately, despite having an advantageous position in society, female athletes from Jamaica are not immune to this problem either. There have been multiple cases of harassment, abuse, and gender-based discrimination, and that is alarming because it highlights the urgent need for proper safeguarding and how athletics need strong enough support systems within sports organizations for the safety of their athletes. To combat this, in 2022, the Jamaican Chamber of Commerce, Samir Yunus Foundation, launched a development intervention that targeted at-risk youth by using sports psychology. This effort was done in collaboration with UN Women, and the project was titled Beyond Sports, Enabling Life Skills for the Youth. Under this initiative, Elite Sports Psychology and Respect Jamaica helped women, men, and young boys and girls to improve their mental well-being, and also focused on promoting more equitable gender roles in their society to reduce gender-based violence. According to official numbers, one in every four women in the country have been subjected to abuse. And when you look at the bigger picture, the safety of female athletes is certainly alarming. Lack of media representation and coverage has also been an obstacle in changing the narrative surrounding female athletes in Jamaica. So if their achievements get highlighted in public, this can challenge any existing biases and also inspire future generations to dream of the impossible. So from the cruel gender-based violence that has restricted women to pursue their passion, 
to the odd balance between equity and opportunity, these were the real challenges female athletes face in Jamaica.